Uninterrupted Media presents LSU Odyssey Oddcast. What is up, everybody? It is the night before LSU's final game of the 2021 season. And uh, we're going to be hosting a live stream, if that's what you call them, what you kids call them nowadays, live stream there on our YouTube channel. And of course, the link will be on lsuodyssey.com. It'll be posted on our Twitter, on our Facebook page, um, Maybe even our MySpace. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll try and uh, hook up with Tom and see if we can we can make that happen. Um, but yes, uh, we are going to be doing that live stream tonight, 7 p.m. Central. Bring your questions about everyone on the on the roster, on the staff, news that's breaking, news that's coming in. Uh, we broke some today. Um, and, uh, you know, just what's all going into this Texas Bowl. We put out our top 10 Tigers to watch out for from this game. We, we, think, it's a, we think it's a strong list, considering all the, all the players LSU are, are missing. Uh, I really think LSU are going to be not only competitive in this game, I think LSU are going to be just fine. I think that sounds crazy, considering we don't even have a quarterback named. I don't care. This is LSU. Now, the coaches we have right now aren't going to let that be an excuse. They're not going to let this uh, create a poor performance. This is the first game under the Brian Kelly era, and I think you're going to see that discipline. I think you're going to see that fight. I think you're going to see a warrior mentality come out from these Tigers, especially the guys who haven't opted out, who aren't headed to the NFL, but are you know seniors as well, or it might be their last game as well. You know, Jay Ward. Cam Lewis, you know, I'm looking at guys like that who who haven't left their teammates hanging, who haven't gone to, you know, I'm not I'm not telling anybody who made those uh, decisions, the opt outs. I'm not saying that any of those decisions are, are bad or selfish. I'm simply saying these guys wanted to be there for their for their teammates, and they're here. And I think those guys are going to be successful tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be. I think you're going to see Jay Ward absolutely flying around like a madman. I'm not saying he's going to have 100 tackles. I'm not saying he's going to have 5 billion interceptions. I'm not even saying he's going to have one interception. Although that's likely. I think it's I think it's like a 9 out of 10, 99.9% chance he creates a turnover of some sort tomorrow. That's just how bad Kansas State's one-dimensional offense is. And someone also believes that they can just uh, go into different lanes without having to use their blinker. Um, also, you know, I feel like with that attitude, with that vengeance and that mentality, oh, I hate the word attitude. Why did I say that? Oh my God, I hate that word. Don't you hate that word too? I hate the word attitude. What was I thinking saying that? Oh, you got to attitude. You got to. Nah, dude. I what you said. I think that's what I did. Anyone remember that song, huh? Well, God, what an awful, what an awful word. But I think because of that high-powered in-your-face mentality from those veteran tigers, I think we will witness a profoundly, you know, in-your-face, you know, barrel house performance from our tigers. I think barrel house is the perfect word. It's, it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be like a bar fight where LSU just scratch and claw, punch, kick, bite, rip the ears off, rip the jugular out of opponents one by one as they get through, make their way through the, uh, the madness, and hopefully finish this season with our seventh win and, you know, stave off that 1999 season as the last season LSU have been under 500. You know, this this could be the first time this century LSU is under 500. And I don't want that. I know none of you want that. I mean, I bet even LSU haters who are listening to this don't want that. Because 
you know, successful LSU is a successful college football. You know, just, you can say that with a lot of different blue bloods, you know, when this team is more successful, the sport is, is better as a product, correct? You know, you know, isn't that correct? Isn't that right? I mean, I guess you wouldn't say that about Alabama, but you would definitely say that about LSU because we make the sport better. We make the sport more fun when LSU are competing, when LSU are contending. And, you know, the future from here on, of course, we're going to be contending. We're going to be competing for titles with Brian Kelly. But as for this game, you know, a lot of people aren't expecting much from LSU here. I'm going to be honest. Um, I was talking to one of the premier college football analysts in this country. You, you probably watch and listen to him every day. Or sorry, not every day. Ev- well, actually, no, take that back. You probably watch or listen to him just about every day, especially every college game day, every, every Saturday or Saturday night. And this guy is one of the funniest, one of the coolest, uh, most down-to-earth analysts in the sport. And I just, I had to ask him what he thought going into this game. You know, I just had to, you know, ask a few people, what, what, what are LSU's chances in your opinion? What are you seeing? Just because I wanted a, wanted a good record of reference for what people were, were feeling going into this game, which could potentially be a historic uh, moment for LSU here. I know that sounds crazy, but, but, um, just, just, just bear with me here because everything has to start somewhere. Okay. And I think this might be the starting you know, the launching pad for a few Tigers being very, very successful in in the next season, in the next seasons to come, really. Because a lot of these guys, you know, there, there's a few guys out there, Jay Ward, BJ Ojolari, a few others who have, you know, maybe just one year left. You know, that's what we're kind of talking about here. And uh, for the vast majority... The rest are just freshmen. Maybe even just barely sophomores. You know, like, these guys have plenty of years left, and I think it's a fantastic preview for the talent that we do have. And, you know, maybe it's a good thing that Damone Clark, Neil Farrell Jr., Ty Davis-Price, Cordell Flott, as we broke the news today, maybe it's a good thing they're all opting out because then we have, you know, prime chances now for guys like Mike Jones Jr., Sage Ryan, Quinton Pig Cage. We have we have a chance now to see all these guys. Mason Smith, Jaqueline Roy, Jacoby and Guillory. We have a chance to see all these guys show out and no excuses. It's time to shine. Time to drop those dimes. And you know, I know we're all concerned about who's gonna be playing quarterback. I will I will give you a little bit of tidbit of information here, okay? I know who is going to start for LSU tomorrow. They have tried everything they can to not let the public, let the media know who's starting for LSU. I know who's starting for LSU tomorrow, and I'm going to be dropping hints, clues, and the name tonight, 7 p.m. Central, LSU Odyssey Oddcast live stream. Join us right here, right at this, you know, same bat channel, same bat station. You know where to find us. Let's go.